What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Burning Hammer Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Izzo, and alongside me is your reigning, defending, undisputed Burning Hammer Predictions champion of the world, Dylan O'Brien. Dylan, how you doing? That is right, Mark. <laughs> you are looking at... The reigning, defending, undisputed, burning hammer, podcast predictions champions, champion of the world. I'm doing all right, Mark. I'm happy to be back. Another episode of the pod. It's a good day to be champion um, of predictions. I, I'm i just happy to be here. I'm happy to be champ. Um, all right, I'm going to put this down. A little uncomfortable. Moving forward, yeah, great episode, uh, great episode of the pod lined up for you guys. Um, I'm super excited to be back, talk more wrestling with Mark, um, tons of stuff going down. We just got uh, some crazy news a couple seconds ago, honestly, um, about a huge free agent, so I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit, um, just huge stuff going on, so uh, excited to be back on the pod. Um, I don't have a new shirt for you guys, but because i'm officially out don't have any more new shirts don't have any coming in the mail i'm what sure i will get some as they go on but that was it you guys got 15 consecutive new shirts from me and that's it pretty good that's pretty good you're at what like 17 now um yeah so i guess i'll show off my shirt because um i do i got three from yeah. my girlfriend from my i'll birthday tell you right now real week. quick i am rocking I'm always going to rock a wrestling shirt. I am rocking the sure. New Day Rocks Run DMC style shirt. And I am rocking this shirt because the New Day showed up on WWE NXT this week to challenge Pretty Deadly at NXT Deadline to possibly become your new WWE NXT World Tag Team Champions. Yeah, that's pretty crazy um, that they showed up in NXT. Yeah, uh, so I um, wanted so to we'll wear that. We'll have to see. We'll um, have to see if they win or not. They, pr I feel like they probably won't win. Um, but just fucking fuck it. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> Let them go do some know. cool shit. They're awesome. I tweeted this the other day. And Xavier, actually, I want to talk about it. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> this is Mark. Okay. Which shirt are you wearing? All right, you're going to have to bring it up because I'm going to forget. I'll bring <laughs> it up. Trust me. Save your woods. But for my T-shirt, um, I have another one, given the time it came out. It was kind of <laughs> iconic. Um, I have the Who Killed the World You Did Bray Wyatt before it was Bray Wyatt T-shirt. Hell yeah. Um, and on the back, I believe we got something I can't see. You did, bitch. Yeah, so there you have it. I got, I have one more shirt left in the chamber. So, um, I'm definitely yeah. gonna get. Uh, it's Christmas season's coming up, so I feel like I'll probably get some. Yeah, and they always run sales, like we say every yeah, week. like but, not even as a gift. Like I'll buy myself one as a Christmas gift. I'm sure because they run sales yeah. and stuff. But anyway, great shirt, great great Thanks. shirt. And like I said at the beginning, um, Dylan is your current Burning Hammer podcast predictions <clears throat> champion, and he is a fighting champion, and he's putting his title on the line at Ring of Honor Final Battle. Now, we are recording this on Thursday. Final Battle is this Saturday. So after Rampage, they may add one or two matches. Currently, there's seven on the card. AEW likes to put 11 on the card way too much. I think seven is a good number, um, but they do have the zero hour, so they might add matches to the zero hour, but we don't do predictions for the kickoff. Come on. Who are we, dude? Um, so Who are you talking to? <laughs> before we get started into the podcast, make sure to follow us on social media. All of our social media, Twitter, we are at The Burnt Hammer. On Instagram, we are at The Burning Hammer. 
It's the best way to stay up to date with when we release new episodes. And it's the best way to stay up to date for all of your professional wrestling needs. We do news. We do rumors. We do reports. We do fantasy booking. We do ranking things. We do all of that good stuff. Anything to fulfill your professional wrestling desire. We do it on social media. If you're watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you. Make sure to subscribe to The Burning Hammer. If you're watching on The Burning Hammer, make sure to follow Vendetta Sports Media at Vendetta Sports Media. Um, and make sure to head over to VendettaSportsMedia.com. Me and Dylan write professional wrestling there. We do the previews and we do results and reviews for WWE and AEW weekly shows. We do betting odds for the pay-per-views. We do match cards. We do early match card predictions along with news, rumors, reports, anything that has to do with professional wrestling. If you want to read our articles, head over to VendettaSportsMedia.com and make sure to follow Vendetta Sports Media on Twitter at VendettaVSM. Follow them on Instagram and TikTok at Vendetta Sports Media. If you're listening to the podcast via audio streaming service, make sure to follow, make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave us a review. That's the best way to help us grow. And it's the best way for you to know when we release a new episode of the podcast. <gasps> That's all I got for you. Hell Let's yeah. <clears throat> Let's okay. Pop. Let's pop it off. All right. ROH final battle. Dylan, your champion. First match we're going to go over is Swerve in Our Glory. Swerve Strickland and Keith Lee is taking on Shane Taylor Enterprises. It's Shane Taylor and J.D. Griffey. Dylan, who do you have coming out on top in this tag team match? All right. Uh, I'm going to go with Taylor and Griffey because I have a little bit of a prediction that... um. Not a not a crazy prediction, but Swerve in our glory is officially going to uh, disperse, disperse this weekend. I think a crazy idea could be, um, and this this was an idea uh, given to me by another member of our wrestling team actually over at Vendetta Michael. So shout out to him. Um, what if what if it's a double turn, and what if what if Keith Lee just like beats the piss out of swerve because he's just so mad and it's a little bit of a double turn keith lee turns heel swerve is the baby face and that 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 could happen um and i think that's a really interesting idea um he didn't like mention the double turn but uh i'm assuming that's the direction it could go if keith lee he's the one who said what if keith lee uh gets really furious with swerve instead of kind of uh you know what I mean? So that that's an interesting an interesting take. I think it could go, but I'm going to go with Taylor and Griffey. I think that's a, a, a great prediction, and I agree. I think Swerve in Our Glory <clears throat> is going to be done after this, but I think that Swerve Strickland is going to turn on Keith Lee, um, and I think it's going to officially be done. So I'm taking Shane Taylor and J.D. Griffey as well. I think Keith Lee turning on Swerve could be interesting because – if you think about it, every time Swerve's music hits and he goes, whose house? The whole crowd chants, Swerve's house. So he already has that sort of connection with the crowd. And I know Lee also has it, but I feel like if you turn Strickland sort of babyface, then it, it could do wonders. But I also do think he's really good as a heel. But mm -hmm. part of me wants to see Keith Lee as, as a heel. So I'm definitely intrigued mm -hmm. by that. But... Yeah. We agree. We're both going Shane Taylor and J.D. Griffey to beat Swerve in Our Glory, Keith Lee, uh, and Swerve Strickland. Um, what's your official prediction? Are you turning Strickland turning on Lee or Lee turning on Strickland or no turns? <clears throat> Give it to uh, me. I guess my, commit to one. my official prediction is going to be Sh Strickland turning on Lee. Very nice. All right. Following that one, we have the ROH Television Championship match, which is the newly signed All Elite member, Juice Robinson, taking on the king of television, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe recently captured the TNT Championship at Full Gear, and he's had the ROH Television Championship since, I believe, Death Before Dishonor. Um, so who do you have coming out on top of this one? Um, Samoa Joe's doing great things right now. So uh, I would I would love to see Samoa Joe get the win here and, and keep this going and and I'm gonna um 
that's going to be my prediction as well. One thing I want to mention, uh, I mentioned this in an article that I, I just wrote is uh, potential potential debuts at at final battle. And I mentioned that Matt Cardona is an option to to debut at final battle. Um, he has there's been rumors of WWE has interest in bringing him back. He's been teasing it on his Instagram as well and his other socials and stuff. But just tell me how awesome it would be for the man once known as the internet champion, the king of the internet, even to come face to face with the king of television. Um, and I just think it would be really, really interesting, really, really fun. Uh, that's just like a kind of a shot in the dark option, I think, that could happen after the match. But I think regardless, Samoa Joe is going to get the win here. I completely agree. I think Samoa Joe is going to come out on top. Um, and you know, Samoa Joe's one of my all time favorites. And it's just when you watch him now, like after his match on Dynamite, he cut um, a really good promo and he just beat the piss out of Darby Allen. And it just makes you think, like, how did AEW just have this guy, like, not doing anything for all of those months? Like, the dude's just on a different level. And so I think he is going to come out on top. I think he is really in a league almost of his own with his with the way that he talks, the way that he does move. I don't know if you saw it, but um he did his walk away spot, but he did it when Darby Allen did his like tope suicida front flip through the bottom of the rope and then he just landed right into like the guardrail, uh, which was brutal. And so I'm taking Smo Joe. Do you think that Wardlow is gonna show up? Um, to confront him. Wardlow's been showing up to confront him for the TNT championship, but do you think he's going to come over to ROH and sort of confront him after the match? Because I think that's something that could happen. I don't think it's likely, but it's definitely something worth noting. What do you think? Yeah, I think it could happen. Um, Yeah, I think it could happen. I think there's a decent chance it does, honestly. All right, and so we're both taking Samoa Joe to walk out as the king of television. I think this has potential to be a really good match. Juice Robinson, New Japan Pro Wrestling, big-time guy, former, uh, I believe, in NXT. He was also there, and he's a really good wrestler, underrated, hasn't hit the market quite as much in the United States, but I think he's going to put a lot of people onto him, um, and I'm excited for this match, and I think it's going to be really good. So moving on to the six-man tag team match, which is the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage taking on the champions Dalton Castle and the boys. I want to get your thoughts because Dalton Castle is someone who I'm more like new to knowing and seeing ever since he sort of started wrestling um, a little bit more in AEW. I know he's, I think he's mostly majorly signed to AEW or to ROH. Um, but what are your thoughts on Dalton Castle? Because I think he could be a pretty big star. Yeah, agreed. I, I, I think he's putting out great work. Um, and I think a, I think a victory for them here is going to be big uh, for Dalton Castle and the boys. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go with them picking up a victory here. Uh, I think it'll be good for the ROH brand, them getting a victory here. And uh, I'm really excited to see what Dalton Castle does as he grows and as he uh, moves forward. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Dalton Boys in the Castle are also going to walk out as Dalton the Dalton Boys in the Castle. Is that what I said? Yeah. <laughs> Dalton Boys in the Castle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, But I think this could be another good match. The Gates of Agony are a really good faction as well, along with Brian Cage. I know Brian mm -hmm. Cage, I feel like, gets a lot of hate online. I'm not sure why. The dude's a freak of nature. But I think this is going to be a really good match. And... One thing I wanted to mention, too, is Tony Khan said he's going to be making a pretty big announcement in the press conference following this show. And there's rumors that ROH has signed a lot of new talent to their roster. If you go on their website, there's only eight um, members of their active roster that are on their official website. So I think we could be getting sort of a shakeup um, with the ROH and all of the titles and really just like separating ROH from AEW. So I think that's definitely something worth noting and keeping in your mind as we're doing these predictions. But And I think that would be awesome. I do. Yeah. I mean, and it's something that they need. They need a weekly show. I mean, we've seen GCW 
um, is putting all of their stuff on Fight TV. Other smaller independent wrestling companies are putting their stuff on Fight TV. So it's definitely something that can be done, especially if you're Tony Khan and if you have a wrestling company that's as historic and legendary as Ring of Honor. And it's something that needs to be done. So hopefully um, that will be the big announcement of following final battle. But before we get into the other predictions, me and Dylan are going to have a little draft here um, in the middle of the pod. You guys have been begging for it, and we're finally going to cave and give you guys a little draft here. And we are going to be drafting current wrestlers, finishers. Um, I believe I have the first overall pick in this draft. Is that correct? Yeah, we're going on. Uh, yeah, so this draft, there's going to be five rounds. And we're doing, Um, it's all about current wrestler, like wrestlers who are... Uh, currently active if they're injured that's all right too they just no no but no like legends and stuff you can't uh, do the stone cold stunner or the rock bottom or things like that and uh yeah we're gonna do five rounds and you guys are gonna let us know afterwards who's got the uh who's got the best squad of all-time finishing moves not all-time finishing moves but <laughs> current finishing moves who's got the best list the best squad that's right squad yeah. up as they say on the Fortnite. So, Let's go. <laughs> if you're not watching, Dylan just did like the Fortnite. Yeah. Is that the Fortnite thing? <laughs> I have no idea. I just thought I just saw a TikTok it of a guy like who was it. bro, I just saw a funny ass TikTok who was like, I don't know, it was just like uh he was like, You walk up and press me or something, and he was just like Oh, yeah, you're talking shit. You like to talk. And he was like, really? That's hilarious. Because one thing about me is I'll fucking rock you right now, dude. <laughs> just like, does like the Power Ranger thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. Let's get anyway. started. Let's get started with this draft. Um, I have the first pick or do you have the first pick? Um, You can do it. You take the first pick. I'm all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, like I'll, take got a the, good group. I'll take the first pick. And I, I feel like. I feel like this is an obvious pick right now. You got to go with it. You got to go for it. The first overall pick. Give me the RKO. Come on, baby. Randy Orton one. is hurt. But, of course, it's one of the most iconic finishers of all time. The RKO. Come on. I mean, it was an, it was an entire meme. It was an entire meme. I mean, what a great finish. And the RKO, you really can hit it out of nowhere. It looks so goddamn cool when it uh, when it gets hit. So, uh, yeah, first overall pick. Not mad about it at all. The RKO. And there's been a lot of Generational really good. Talent. There's been a lot of really good RKOs hit also over the years that you can mm -hmm. just think of. Rollins, curb stomp. Um, uh, Orton tosses him up. RKO. Evan yeah, that's Born. one of my favorite ones ever. Yeah. The Evan Bourne one, dude. Start pressing to the RKO. There's been <laughs> plenty. Yeah. Um, great pick. Honestly, one that I forgot to even write down. But for mine, I'm going to go with one that is probably, at least as of right now, one of, if not the most protected professional wrestling finisher. And that is the god of professional wrestling, Kenny Omega, one-winged angel. Give it mm. to me all day, every day. Yeah. First round. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, a very fire pick. Very fire pick. The One-Winged Angel by Kenny Omega. Hmm. Let's see where I'm going to go here. All right. I'm going to go back to the WWE. And I'm going to pick one of my favorite finishers of all time. One of the coolest finishers in the history of professional wrestling. Give me. The Styles Clash by AJ Styles. I mean, seriously, an iconic ass finisher. One of my favorite finishers ever. Literally remember being like 10 years old watching TNA going like, holy shit, what was that? That was cool as shit. I just like remember being like a kid watching a TNA match, watching AJ Styles hit the Styles Clash. And I was like, that was awesome. I was like, that guy's finisher is so cool. And I was just obsessed with it ever since then. Um. Um, it is a pretty protected finisher. Um, WWE doesn't do great at protecting finishers, but as far as uh, WWE goes, it's one of the more protected finishers in WWE. 
Uh, he gets a lot of finishes with the f- phenomenal forearm and whatnot. So when he does hit the Styles Clash, you feel like he's got a good chance to pick up the win. Um, yeah, just one of my favorite moves ever. So I'm going with the Styles Clash. Styles Clash. I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> That's how you have to say it now from now yeah. on. Anytime Styles Clash. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great pick um and it's one that i'm definitely newer to i definitely haven't really been paying attention to aj styles until he was in wwe um i have a friend who's like super into tna back in the day which was like kind of rare um you like preferred it over wwe which was kind of sick but for my second round pick i've got a good one um i'm i got a few good ones it's hard to pick but i think i've got to do it I'm taking the paradigm shift, Mr. Moxley's finisher, one that's pretty gnarly. Um, and definitely once he hits it, it's just something you just go, oh, fuck, every time he hits it. Give me the paradigm mm-hmm. shift, second round pick. I feel like that could be a nice little steal. Yeah, yeah. The paradigm shift is a very cool move. Um, and the way he hits it now, too, is just fucking fire. It's like so quick. Just <clears throat> um, yeah. yeah, great pick. In the second round, the second round pick, potential to be a first round pick, um, potential to be a first round player. The paradigm shift um, fell to the second round. But all right. So so I do think that's a great pick. All right. With the third overall pick. Um, this player, you know what I mean? This this pick, it is, uh, you know, what, what I needed on my team now was I got the RKO which was I got the move that you can just bang, hit out of nowhere. Boom. Where's, oh, boom. You're walking down the street. Boom. RKO out of nowhere. (laughs) Boom. I got that type of move. And then I also have the move that AJ Styles, you know, a a little more. And I uh, also iconic move, but a move that takes a little setting up when he hits it. Boom. You see the arms go out. You go, oh my God, he's about to hit the Styles clash. And then he puts it up and he hooks the arms with his legs and whatnot. So now I need some some action in the air, baby. I need some action in the air. Give me pack with the black arrow. Ah, oh. uh, I really wanted that one. Yeah. Yeah. Give me the That's black a good one. arrow. That's a good one. I was going to try to get that one late in I the mean, draft. Yeah. I thought it was going to fall, but just that's a, a great court, player. The Black Arrow, um, a cork, uh, if you're unfamiliar, it is a corkscrew shooting star press, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's what it looks it's like. It's he, he does. I think it's a, it's definitely, it's a shooting star. It's a corkscrew shooting star press, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Let's go with it. Yeah. It sounds right. Um, <laughs> It's fucking insane. Hits it perfect every time. Every One of time. the best in the world. Um, such a cool fucking move. I needed some action in the air, like I said. And who who better than the bastard pack uh, to give it to me? So I'm taking the Black Arrow. It's a great pick. I thought um, the Black Arrow was going to fall in the later rounds, but scooped him up before me, um, which is tough to see. So I'm going to have to do um, a little bit of a pivoting here. And I just want to say this every time we talk about him. Pac is a top five wrestler on the planet. Said it before. I'll always say it. I'll die on the hill. Uh, argue with your mom if you got a problem with it because he is a top five wrestler. So, with my third round pick, I'm debating between a few, but I got to go with another one. One of my favorite wrestlers currently. <sighs> Give me the Black Mass. Ooh. Malachi Black, spinning mm-hmm. back heel kick. Hits it perfect. Almost every time. It is so fucking really awesome. just pretty vicious, pretty gnarly heel kick right to your fucking jaw. Um, mm-hmm. And it's one of my favorite moves, finishers uh, in today's era. Yeah. Yeah, that is a great move, man. That is a great move. Hmm. All right. Wow. So that was your, what, third round pick? So yep. I'm on my fourth? All right. So my... Ooh. So you've got the paradigm shift, you've got the the one winged angel, and you've got the black mass. I've got the RKO, the Styles Clash, and the Black Arrow. Unintentionally, all of mine are AEW <laughs> you finish. Yeah. Not intentional, um, I swear. I do like WWE. Give me. I'm sorry to do it to you, Mark. Oh boy. 
I gotta take it from you. I know you want it. Give me the prince. Finn Balor. Coup de gras. Oh. Uh, I, yeah, I, 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 didn't, one. I didn't want to have to do it to you since I already had the black arrow. <laughs> I didn't want to go back to back off the top rope finishers. Um, because uh, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you here. I, I, of course, I'm a fan of all types of wrestling, but I really, um, I love, I love a, I love a finisher that takes a lot of setting up, uh, like with, within your body and weird shit like that. Like I'm usually not an off the top rope finisher guy, but those two, I had to take my favorites, probably my two favorites off the top rope. Um, the coupe de grasse. Uh, is often referred to as the coup de gras, the coup de gras. I don't know the <clears throat> real um, saying, but pronunciation, I mean. But yeah, got to go with, um, I'm going to go with the coup de gras. Great pick. I was debating between the coup de gras and the black mass. I thought you weren't going to pick the coup de gras. I thought I was going to get them a bit later in the drafts, but yeah. I paid the price for it. Um, so again, I'm gonna have to pivot. I'm making a few phone calls, seeing who's available, who wants to be a part of the team. Um, I still have three that I feel pretty good about. You took one of mine. I think I'm gonna have to take one of yours. Might be bold, but I'm gonna have to do it. Give me Mr. Baron Corbin's end of days. Oh, I was gonna take it in the fifth round. <laughs> Dude, um, it's I had to a, jump up a little dude, bit. I had to get it. I had to get the guy it's I a wanted. Fucking end cool of days. Ass, it's a great dude, finisher. You don't like it, fight people, me. I don't people, care. Yeah, dude. Finisher. I swear to God, people hate on it so much. It's uh, they don't even hate on that. They just hate on Baron Corbin, and I hate on Baron Corbin too, honestly. But that move is so fucking cool. That move is awesome. Great move. Um, um yeah, yeah. Just had what a great move. Fourth round pick. It might be a reach, but. You got to get the guys that you want. And I think he has the potential to uh, be a breakout player for me. Yeah, dude. What a great, uh, yeah, the the end of days. Very cool move. You can hit it off the ropes. You can hit it by grabbing the arm, um, which is, uh, that's one of my favorite parts about it is that he can hit it several different ways. Yeah. Um, he can just hit it off the ropes. He can do like a little rip cord type of thing. Wow. I was going to take that with the fifth round. Didn't think you were going to take it. I had to. Sorry. Hmm. I'm choosing between two. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it just because he hit such an incredible one very recently. When he launched off the back of Austin Theory and stomped Bobby Lashley into the mat. Give me the curb stomp. Give me the curb great one. stomp by Seth Rollins. Um, it was a move that, I will tell you, when he, I didn't love it at first, but over the years, it has really grown on me. Um, uh, the, the, Seth hits it so fucking well. Uh, he just knows how to deliver it so well. It, it looks pretty fucking brutal at times. Um and it's a type of move, you know what I mean? That like it's, uh, I love. Like I said, he can do cool versions of it. I think that's another. Ver I think that's another thing that uh, he he got with me. Like I said, he launched himself off of the back of Theory and stomped uh, Lashley, which I thought was really cool. You know, just uh, cool shit. Um, uh, I'm definitely gonna have to mention a few honorable mentions because. Uh, I left a couple on the board that, you know, I would have liked to have on my team, but uh, went with Seth Rollins' curb stomp. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, I, that was, I had three for my final pick that I was debating. That was one of them. So now I'm between two. One is a sleeper, um, and I it's tough to decide between these two because I really do like them both. <sighs> but I'm going to have to do it, Dill. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to get Usi. I'm going to have to have the Blue Thunder Bomb. Oh, what a great move. I forgot all about it. Blue Thunder yeah. Bomb is a fucking awesome move. Yeah. Beautiful move, too. Wow. What a great. Oh, my God. Did you see? Um, did you... <laughs> We just got to talk about it a little bit. I didn't get to watch all of Raw this week. Uh, I called Bits and Pieces. It's finals week for me. 
a lot going on. But um, did you see where he was like uh? Did you see hit Sammy's promo with Riddle? I did not, bro. Where he was just like, he was like taking out a uh, Eli- taking out Elias. That doesn't seem very oozy. That's what Riddle said, or something, because they like attacked Elias before the match, and then Sammy was like. No, he was like, no, no, no. You don't get to decide what is Usi and what isn't Usi. All right, Matt Riddle. He was like, I, I'm my, I myself am, in fact, an Usologist. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, and he like, right. He was just like, uh, he was like, he was like Solo Sokoa, proving once again that he is the enforcer of the bloodline by taking out. You're sorry, tag team partner Elias. That's Usi. That is <laughs> Usi. He was like the Usos remaining the longest WWE tag team champions of all time. That's Usi. He was like, You, my friend Riddle, you are not Usi. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like so fucking good. Uh, He's on top of the world now. Um, yeah. KO ended up being his partner. Uh, but why don't you go through some honorable mentions? I only yeah. had two that aren't on that yeah. didn't use that were on my list. Um, so another um, one of my favorite finishers of all time uh, that is a guy currently hurt, but uh, the kill switch Christian Cage, um, such a cool move in my opinion. Uh, like I said, I like moves that take a little bit of setup. And you're just like, holy, I like moves that are almost just like, bro, how did you get into that position that you are? The kill switch almost feels like that. You know what I mean? Where I'm just yeah. like, oh, my God. Uh, such a cool move, in my opinion. Love the kill switch. Uh, Matt Hardy's twist of fate. Uh, both Hardy brothers, I guess you could really kind of say. But Jeff Guest is an active. But uh, <clears throat> Matt Hardy with the twist of fate. Um, what a, What a great... What a great finisher, a legendary finisher. The oh, uh, fucking shit. Um, one of my favorite moves to hit on the pillows when we were younger. Yeah, um, great one. Yeah, just like throwing it in the thing. Oh, uh, and um, the other the other one I wanted to mention was the over the moon salt EO Sky. Uh, she hits it perfectly, like literally every single fucking time. Um, the, she truly is the goddess of, the, uh, not the goddess of the sky, the genius of the sky, um, Eo sky. So yeah, that, that was my honorable mention. Did I, did I say any that you were waiting on or you did not? So, um, I had a couple, I thought of one while you were talking. So an honorable mention, one that I think is perfect for this wrestler is the Judas effect. Um, spinning back elbow. I think it gets a lot of hate, but personally, I think it's perfect for Chris Jericho at this stage of his career. I think he doesn't hit it perfect every time. You know, he's getting up in age. That's fine. But he can hit it with such force and pretty much out of nowhere as well um, that I do think it is one of the better finishers in the day of today. And it is one that is also extremely protected. Um, So that was an honorable mention. And I have to mention Ricochet's 630 um, mm. just incredible. I mean, just based off of someone being able to do that is uh is pretty damn incredible. And then my last honorable mention is Hangman Page's Buckshot Lariat. Oh yeah, um, one that we see is not easy to hit. Um, as many try, but many also fail. Mm-hmm. Um, so Buckshot Lariat's a good one. Probably should have been in the draft, but uh, it's all good. He's an honorable mention. Logan Paul did it. Logan Paul Logan- did it pretty well. Did he? Didn't he? <laughs> he did do it pretty damn good. All right, so let's get back to these predictions. We have business to handle. Dylan's got has a d- title to defend. We have four more matches in the final battle card. And so the next one is the ROH Pure Championship match. It is Wheeler Yuta taking on your champion, Daniel Garcia. If you aren't sure of what a Pure Rules match is, uh, I'm going to explain it very briefly or you can go ahead and read my article on it. ROH Pure Rules match. Just like every ROH match, both competitors must adhere to the code of honor, a handshake before and after the match. And along with every ROH match, they have a 20 count on the outside of the ring. But an important difference 
There are no closed fist strikes to the head. If you do it once, that's a warning. If you do it twice, you're out of here. Disqualification. Um, another big thing. They Each competitor gets three rope breaks in the match to stop a pinfall or a submission. Once you use up all three, you cannot break up a pinfall or submission by using a rope break. Another thing if is if there's outside interference, the wrestler terminated Dunzo in ROH, and the title can change hands via disqualification or a countout. There is no champion's advantage. This is a wrestler's a wrestling purist wet dream match. So if you're a wrestling purist, mm -hmm. watch this match. Um, Dylan, what do you have coming out on top? Uh, yeah, so this one was actually uh, kind of a little bit more difficult for me to portray because uh, I like the idea of a crazy prediction of the Blackpool Combat Club turning heel and taking all the titles and running ROH as heels. Um, and I think that's, um, I think that's a really interesting option, but I do think Daniel Garcia is going to get the win here. And I also do have another bold prediction, um, that you might, you might agree with, but, uh, a ROH legend, Nigel McGinnis, uh, once held the ROH pure title for a record, uh, over 300 something days. I'm not sure if it's still the record. Uh, it was at the time. It might be, honestly. Uh, he might still be the longest reigning, uh, like the longest. He might have the longest ROH pure title reign. So I think that would be, I mean, he's been out of action in ring for a while, but I think it would be so cool to just like have Daniel Garcia just be like interrupted by an ROH pure legend, uh, Nigel McGuinness, um, challenging him to say like, are you really the next big thing? Let's go, Daniel Garcia. You know what I mean? Like, let, let's sure. find out. You got to go through some legends to be the ROH pure champion. So, I, uh, I like the idea of like, I like the idea of Daniel Garcia and having to go through like ROH pure wrestling legends to really like earn his name. Yeah. And there's plenty currently on the AEW roster to do so. And in case you didn't know, the ROH Pure Championship started in 2004. AJ Styles defeated CM Punk to become the first champion. The title was then inactive in 2006 after Brian Danielson beat Nigel McGuinness uh, for the ROH Pure Championship and the ROH World Championship. Danielson unified the championships. In 2020, ROH brought it back after popular demand from the fans. Um, incredible, Matt. Uh, title i think it's probably a title that has the best stipulation maybe in all of professional wrestling and it's one of the best stipulations in all of professional wrestling it well. just it makes sense too like i'm surprised nobody else has one like that's uh, what i'm saying it's so yeah. unique like there's nothing like it really um but it's just like uh, yeah and it's just such a good idea like i'm surprised nobody else has like a um i don't know you know what i mean just yeah it's just such a good idea so unique yeah. Love it for sure. Um, and I also I do think Nigel McGuinness is going to return, uh, in at final battle. I don't, I don't know how old he is. I don't know if he's going to like wrestle, but I think he's definitely going to appear, maybe manage someone. But I think he's definitely going to show up at final battle. But I agree. Yeah. I think Daniel Garcia is. Yeah, gonna that's come the other thing. I'm not even him. saying he could like necessarily have to wrestle. He could show up managing someone and say some shit like that because I do believe he is the longest reigning. The, the longest he has the longest title reign as always pure champion yeah so me and dylan both agree daniel garcia taking the roh pure championship home with them um and this match is gonna be incredible they fought at uh i want to say death before dishonor they fought it was a classic um and then they fought again for the title at an AEW dynamite show which was in buffalo daniel garcia's home that's where he won the title and Yuta and Garcia are two of the best young talents in all of professional wrestling. Garcia's 23, Yuta's 26. So um, definitely be aware of these guys now because um, they're definitely future legends in the making. And following that match, <clears throat> we've got a new addition to the card. We have FTR is defending their ROH Tag Team Championships against the Briscoes. But this is no ordinary match. This is a double dog collar match. One of the most brutal and vicious matches in all of professional wrestling. 
This is going to be a really good match. It's not going to be for the faint of heart. The Briscoes and FTR put on classic match after classic match. PWI just released their top wrestlers of the year. Usos were number one. FTR was number two. Um, I don't remember the others, but there you have it. There's that. Dylan, who do you think is going to come out on top? Dude, it's hard. So I literally had an article written, which kind of sucked for me because I literally had an article written done um, for like three potential returns at Final Battle. And I had uh, the Briscoe brothers on there. So like I was already done that article and then that I met, then that match got announced. Uh, I mean, you're not you're not wrong. They did return and they will return at Final Battle. Yeah, but now it was like, you know what I mean. Yeah. I had to find somebody new. That, and then I replaced them. No, I replaced them with McGinnis, actually. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, it's, dude, it's so hard to know where this is going to go. I feel pretty good about my answer. You take yours. <clears throat> Give me the Briscoes. Um, I'm Fuck, taking the Briscoes wanna, all day. Dude, yeah, I don't – yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to do, too. We yeah, can agree, the, um, and then yeah. we'll handle it later. I but just yeah, think, I think we're okay. going to agree on every match, but give me the Briscoes, too. It's a double so, dog collar match it, at <clears throat> ROH, bro. Dude, it's the Briscoes' home. Like They're the inaugural ROH Hall of Famers. Like, they are ROH, F- man. Yeah, and FTR has defeated the Briscoes before, maybe twice. I'm not sure the exact record between the two, yeah. but... And this is I, the Briscoe's territory. Like, this is ROH in a double dog collar match. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. And like, I just Briscoe's think... That's Briscoe shit. That's not FTR <laughs> shit. I'm sorry. That's not FTR I, shit. That's Briscoe shit. I think that part of the reason they're going to win is they're going to branch off. Um, like, ROH is going to start to branch off more from AEW. So I don't think they're going to have yeah. FTR. Um, and FTR ROH just doesn't need to hold three tag team titles anymore. Yeah, like, it was cool, but... Yeah, I think they're going to start to lose them all. and Because I do think they're going to be the next AEW tag champs. Yeah. Um, so I think they are going to start to drop the titles. And I think it's going to start with the ROH world title or the tag titles at Final Battle. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think anything crazy is going to happen in this match? Like any bold predictions or returns or anything in this match? I don't, I don't have any like major predictions. I just think it's going to be fucking crazy. <laughs> I yeah, it's I mean, be an insane fucking match. This match alone is going to be worth the buy to watch this. I'm just trying to think because the reports are that, and they are just reports, but the reports are that a um, Tony Khan has signed people to ROH. So I'm trying to think of like who could return or debut for them. Um, so stay up to date with our social media. Enzo and, and Cass. No, I was just joking. <laughs> Um, well, Cass is also in. Hey, I know. Oh. Um, make sure. Yeah, what is, is he? Kaz XL? No, no, he's not that anymore. No, he's what is W he? Morrissey? Yeah, W Morrissey. I always forget his fucking name because it's, it's stupid. Um, <laughs> and they never say his name. They just always say the firm. <laughs> that is um, true. <laughs> Stay up to date with our social media, and we'll yeah. get out. Or post some stuff on um, some major debuts, returns, um, or like heel turns, baby face turns, things like that. So I mean, I'm trying to think of somebody who could return specifically in this match. It would be a tag team. A... Yeah, that's I'm not what I'm saying. To I'm trying to think of a tag with... team. I'm not up to date with ROH that much. I haven't. I've never really watched them, um, which is a shame. But the... I'll have to look some things up for sure. All right. Yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, one I don't know how likely it is, but I could see like Christopher Daniels and um Scorpio Sky maybe mm. coming back as a team or Frankie Kazarian, although I think Kazarian signed with Impact, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um it's a dark horse, but it's something that could happen. I think they're both signed to AEW still. Um so we'll wait, have to see. Like what I about said. um wait? Wait, sorry. Do it. What about uh, sorry. 
Give me a sec. I'm going to plug our socials. Dylan's looking up something to stay up to date with when we release new episodes and for when we who we think is going to appear at ROH Final Battle. Follow us on Twitter at The Burnt Hammer, and you can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at The Burning Hammer. Uh, We've been posting a lot. All of your professional wrestling needs, rumors, news, reports, fantasy stuff. Follow us on social media, and it's a great way to stay up to date with when we release new episodes. And make sure to follow Vendetta Sports Media on their socials. On Twitter, they're at VendettaVSM. And on Instagram and TikTok, they are at Vendetta Sports Media. And check out VendettaSportsMedia.com for all of our articles, all of your professional wrestling needs, news, rumors, reports, previews, um, results, and reviews for the AEW and WWE weekly shows we do, along with a ton of other stuff. And Dylan just published um, a few articles as well on vendettasportsmedia.com so make sure to check out the website to stay up to date and to read all of our latest articles and if you're watching on youtube like comment subscribe um and if you're watching on the burning hammer or if you're watching on vendetta make sure to check out the other one like comment subscribe um it really does help us out a lot dylan he's done from his research what did you find out i was just making sure that they were in impact still what if the motor shooting what if the motor city machine guns came out That'd be cool. Mm. Well, they um are they signed to Impact? They're on the website. Well, because they appeared. They just wrestled in AEW. Um, yeah, I know. That wouldn't be bad. Or they're ROH <laughs> legends, kind of. They could um, do the kingdom. Matt yeah. Tavern or Taven, I May- can't remember, and Mike. Bennett. Oh, they could do um, Cardona and what's his face, Myers. Yeah, <clears throat> major players. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that would be sick. All right, moving on. Let's move on. We've spent enough time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So next up, we have. The ROH Women's World Championship match. It is your challenger, Athena, taking on your champion, Mercedes Martinez. Dylan, who do you have and why? Uh, I'm going to take Athena here. I think Athena is going to be the new ROH Women's World Champion. And uh, I think she's going to kind of lead this uh, ROH Women's Division, hopefully, in uh, which comes kind of like a brand split for AEW and ROH because right now they're kind of mixed together. But um, yeah, I'm going with Athena here. I completely agree. Um, I think <laughs> there is almost zero shot that Martinez walks out. I don't want to say zero. I think she could win, but I just think Athena's like really hitting her stride. And yeah. I think they need to do something with her. I think they realize they fucked up by not having her win the TBS title and they just don't want her on the sidelines. So I think making her ROH women's world champion would do a lot for the company. Agreed. I think it'd be a good decision. So I'm all for it. <clears throat> all right. Um, and <laughs> we're gonna have to figure out a tiebreaker, but so the final match, the main event is the ROH World Championship, which is your challenger, Claudio Castanoli, taking on your champion, The Ocho, Chris Jericho. If Claudio loses, he will be forced to join the Jericho Appreciation Society. Dylan, I'm scared to ask you, who do you have winning? I got The Ocho. <laughs> the Ocho. Chris Jericho, I'm assuming you have the Ocho as well. Um, I do. I do yeah. have the Ocho. He's going for the Ocho. And he's now going to um be the leader and the face of ROH as he attempts to <clears throat> destroy it. Um, um, he's obviously, it's Chris Jericho, so I think the ROH world champion is going to be the exception to... um. I think the ROH world title, especially while Jericho's holding it, is still going to be the exception. I think we're going to see that on regular AW programming regardless. Um, I do think that is the one title that's going to like stay on AEW programming, obviously, especially if the Ocho has got it. Um, but yeah, and I'm interested to see how this ends up playing out with you know Claudio joining JAS and whatnot, but yeah, I got got to keep the title on the Ocho right now. He's doing great things. 
Yeah, and also you just have to think about all of the members of the Jericho Appreciation Society. Like, you need your leader on AEW, so Jericho's not just going to just strictly stick to ROH. Um, I do have Chris Jericho. I'm thinking about changing it because... I just don't know if they're going to put Claudio in the Jericho Appreciation Society. I mean, because they did put, uh, not that this is relatively, we're even close to the same thing, but they did put Hardy with the firm, um, and they have done different things with guys being under contract. But part of me thinks that the Blackpool Combat Club is going to might start to slowly dismantle. So that's where I sort of lean towards Chris Jericho, but I don't know, man. How many times can Claudio challenge for the title and not win? Um, I guess one more time. <laughs> um, I can't, I can't. Cause I, I, I also just predicted that Danielson, um, is going to be the next ROH world champion. So I yeah. feel like I have to stick to that. So I'm taking Jericho. We're going to figure out a tiebreaker um, or maybe we'll switch to um, some sort of points system based off of returns or how long uh, matches go or the order in which we think matches will be. We'll figure something out, but make sure to follow us on social media to figure out what we do for the tiebreaker. And it's funny because we were just talking about, I believe it was last week, that um we used to do this with like every wwe show and then yeah we, we stopped doing it and now we're doing it with roh but um we'll have to see and we wanted you wanted to talk about before we uh sign off on the pod i wanted to briefly bring up the fact that dylan just wrote an article about it and we can touch briefly on this and um the other thing but sasha banks is reportedly expected to appear at New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 17 this month. According to PW Insider, it's being reported that those close to her and her situation said that she is expected to be at Wrestle Kingdom 17. Now, whether she's going to appear in front of a live crowd or not has yet to be um, disclosed, but it is something that's worth noting that she is expected to be in attendance, and she is reportedly still under contract with WWE, and she is on their main roster um, page on WWE.com. But Dylan, thoughts about um, the boss, Sasha Banks, potentially heading over to New Japan? Uh, yeah, I mean, talk about what what a loss it would be for WWE if she doesn't stay with them. Um, seriously, just like we're talking about, uh, you know, how the uh, how the SmackDown women's division needs a lot of work. Uh, Sasha, of course, would be the perfect person to throw in there as well as Naomi. Um, so no news on Naomi, but it would just be a huge loss for WWE. But I'm happy for, as a fan of wrestling, I just want to see Sasha return to wrestling sooner rather than later. And I don't care where it is at this point. Um, she's good for wrestling. She's good for the sport. Um, she's one of the best wrestlers in the world not just female wrestlers she is one of the best talents in the world overall uh in in the industry she's amazing so yeah as a wrestling fan uh i just want her back back in the ring sooner rather than later and uh wrestling as a sport is better with her in it so uh, let's hope we see that soon completely agree and i think that sasha and naomi not wrestling for these past six or so months just really drives home the fact that they are way more than professional wrestlers. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to see them have success outside of professional wrestling as much as I do miss them inside the squared circle. I think I'm happy for them. I'm happy that they're finding success. It's also reported that Sasha Banks filed some new trademarks. Um, and so we'll have to see Mercedes how Monet. Yeah, we'll Might have to see how that, how that plays out. And then Dylan wanted to talk about Xavier Woods. Let's yeah. He's just awesome, and he needs to win a world title. <laughs> I think at an Xavier Woods world title run, seriously, would just, like, cure my depression. And I hope <laughs> he sees this, and I hope he knows this. That if Xavier wins, 
Xavier Wood, Woods wins the world title one day, it's going to be fucking awesome because it's just going to be so fun. Like, yeah. the guy is just, I don't know. Like, I've just, like, seen, like, it was, I seen him on an NXT. Um, and then I saw a video, uh, from a while back when at like WrestleMania 35 of him, like, have you seen the video of him singing Batista's theme song, like watching Batista's entrance at WrestleMania? Um, I, I haven't. <laughs> Dude, it's so fucking funny. It's just Xavier Woods, like standing in like, I don't know, like some sort of area where he can like see out there and you can like hear kind of, but like nobody can like see. He's not like in the crowd. Yeah. Um, and he's just like, and it's just him just going like, and it's just, it. and then he's just like running and he was like, I walk for miles inside this bit of danger. And he was like, this song, this song is awesome. <laughs> and he was just like, it was just, dude, he's just amazing. Like, he's just awesome. And he needs, like, Kofi's won it, Biggie's won it. Put it on and put it on Woods. He's the youngest of the three. He's awesome. He was the man who thought of the new day. Um, yeah, completely agree. Xavier Woods so, is the man. Really funny. Um, and like you said, I think the best word to describe a championship run would just be fun. It would just be yeah, a it would fun just be title so run. So fun. Um, um slept on on the mic. It. Very Hell charismatic. Yeah, so good. overall. A guy you want to see succeed and so hopefully um the audience burning hammer i'm going to need you to turn down your volume and uh triple h wwe creative you guys can uh, turn up a little bit and this is just me and dylan talking to you no one else is listening um but we just wanted to say that um we really think you should make xavier woods wwe or universal champion he needs a world championship um again this is just between um us me you and dylan obviously trips it's a pleasure to uh, have you listening to the pod and it's nice to finally meet you, doctor dr xavier woods doctor um former king even yes king of the ring um so trips make it happen and please um, and then once it happens um you can uh me and dylan we would consider coming on uh ww creative or maybe doing some commentary things so uh you know, our door is always open. Trips. I know uh, William Regal is probably back there um, listening to this as well. So uh, give us a call, Trips. If you know what's good for, if you know what's best for business, as you used to say, give the Burning Hammer Boys a call. All right, Trips, um, you can turn your volume back down. And everyone else, you guys can turn your volume back up and tune back into the pod. Um, that was just off the record between us and uh, Triple H and WWE Creative. So there you have it. Great episode of the pod. Dylan defending his Burning Hammer podcast predictions championship. Stay up to date with our social media. Like I said, um, we're going to figure out a tiebreaker and to see who wins or retains the Burning Hammer podcast predictions championship. Again, follow us on Twitter at The Burnt Hammer. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok at The Burning Hammer. All of your professional wrestling needs, news, rumors, reports, fantasy stuff. All of that good stuff we do. We put it out on social media, so make sure to check it out. Make sure to follow us. And it's a good way to stay up to date with when we release new episodes of the pod. And if you're listening to the pod via audio streaming service, make sure to follow, make sure to subscribe, and make sure to leave us a review. That stuff really does go a long way. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Make sure to subscribe and make sure to leave a comment. If you're watching on The Burning Hammer, um, check out Vendetta Sports Media. If you're watching on Vendetta Sports Media, make sure to check out The Burning Hammer and make sure to follow Vendetta Sports Media on their socials, Twitter at Vendetta VSM, Instagram and TikTok at Vendetta Sports Media and check out VendettaSportsMedia.com to read any and all professional wrestling articles. We do betting odds. We do early match card predictions. We do match cards. We do previews and we do results and reviews for the WWE and AEW weekly television shows, along with news, rumors, reports, anything involving professional wrestling. Check out Vendetta Sports Media. <gasps> Ain't that All the right. truth? The truth it is. All right. This has been a great episode. I'm Mark Izzo. He's Dylan O'Brien, and that this I has am. been another episode of the Burning Hammer podcast. We will catch you in the next one. Keep it sucker free.